Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar, which will be uh, uh, focusing on uh, describing the, the new tax regime as approved in the uh, uh, recent uh, Spanish Financial Act applying to the operation of online gambling uh, operators in Spain. This has been uh, quite an uh, unexpected uh, development for for a number of years. So we have thought that it was it would be good to to spend some twenty to thirty minutes uh, describing the main features of uh, this new regime, as well as the opportunities that it offers. In order to do so, uh, we will have uh, two speakers. On the one hand, we will have uh, Xavier Chiville who is uh, a partner here at Cuatro Casas uh, in the tax area, specialized in uh, gambling, uh, in the gambling sector. We will also count with myself, um, Albert Agustino, I'm the partner in charge of the gambling practice here in the firm. So we hope that uh, the session is of interest for you today. The features we want to deal with is uh, precisely kind of uh, providing some uh, highlights on the most relevant features connected with uh, the new tax regime that is applicable from July the 1st uh, to the operation of online gambling activities in Spain. Therefore, what we will be addressing will be, first of all, kind of put things in context, see how uh, the, uh, uh, well, the new regime has been prepared and in which context, uh, context is being uh, deployed. And then afterwards, uh, Xavi will enter into uh, describing the, 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 the main features, uh, particularly focusing on the opportunities uh, connected with the uh, uh, location of operators in the autonomous cities of Ceuta and Melilla, as well as uh, several examples on how this new regime uh, will be working. Again, our idea is to have a practical session where we can address the, the elements that are maybe of interest for both uh, operators which are already present in the Spanish market. I want to get uh, a good understanding of this uh, regime, as well as, as for operators which are considering the potential entry into the Spanish market uh, as a consequence of, among others, these uh, tax reduction. Precisely in this respect, note that Spain uh, has uh, counted with a regulated uh, environment since uh, May 2011. The first set of uh, uh, licenses uh, were uh, was approved in June 2012, and uh, the, the the whole regulatory framework is uh, uh, based on the Spanish so-called Gambling Act. This act, as mentioned, was approved on May 2011 in a moment where the Spanish authorities were facing significant financial difficulties. So this may be uh, an explanation why the average tax rate that was applicable to uh, uh, operators uh, which uh, entered into the Spanish market were facing uh, quite a significant uh, tax uh, uh, rate in the sense that uh, other uh, very relevant European markets, such as uh, United Kingdom or Italy, were uh, counting and do actually count uh, with uh, uh, rates that are below the original 25% that was established in, uh, in Spain. This has been a recurring demand from the uh, industry in the sense of uh, trying to uh, uh, lighten somehow the uh, uh, tax burden. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the uh, idea of reducing the, the applicable tax rates to online gambling operations uh, has uh, did finally crystallize in the draft financial bill for uh, this year. The procedural problem and political problem that we face in this respect is that once this reduction had been uh, included in the uh, in the in the bill, uh, there was a political storm in Spain, which uh, led uh, well to uh, an actual impeachment of uh, the, the, the the former prime minister, uh, Mr. Mariano Rajoy, and the Popular Party uh, government. And as a matter of fact, on June the second. Uh, a new government was appointed uh, with Pedro Sánchez as the new prime minister. 
So that uh, storm took place in the middle of the parliamentary development of the uh, legislative procedure for approval of the Financial Act. And uh, the fears uh, surrounding this change of government were related precisely on whether the new government would uh, actually uh, uh, well, uh, stick to the same, uh, let's say, uh, regime or uh, or not. So uh, finally, uh, the the, um, the, um, the 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 new government did actually uh, maintain uh, the, the the bill as it stood. It was finally approved, and therefore now, since uh, July the first, we do count with a um, with a, uh, a a new regime for the online uh, gambling tax. So, in this respect, uh, Chabi will afterwards uh, will now uh, uh, speak on the main features connected with this new tax. As Albert said, from July the 4th, the Spanish Official Gazette published the new Financial Act, and this new Financial Act introduced from July the 1st the new measures uh, that we will be discussing on, on them. Uh, these new measures, so are the current uh, uh, regime, gambling regime, and we will uh, face this new uh, tax burden in the tax return that we, it will be submitted in October, the 763 form that it will be submitted in, in, in October for this third uh, quarter. Uh, the main uh, aspects of the new uh, tax regime is the other uh, reduction in the gambling tax uh, from 25% to 20% flat rate. Uh, the modification on the on how the the taxable base is calculated, uh, since uh, we move from uh, different uh, different kind of uh, calculations depending on the uh, on the uh, kind of games that we are. Uh, uh, that we are uh, developing from the gross profit to the net profit and the 50% tax reduction and companies located in the autonomous cities in of Ceuta and Melilla. This reduction is uh, quite relevant and we will uh, analyze in, in, in the next slides a bit this new regime and, and the reasons why or, and the uncertainties that this regime has. In this table, we are trying to, to illustrate the changes that are currently uh, in force. Uh, as you could see, we have the previous regime. In the previous regime, there are different kinds of uh, calculations of the, of the taxable base. We were uh, we go from gross profit, where the taxable uh, the tax uh, the taxable base was calculated base was calculated as a total amount paid to participating games and it, it was not possible to deduct any prices paid out to uh, the participants. And there were other, uh, other kind of games where the tax, uh, the taxable base are calculated um, or you know, was calculated depending on the net profit. So we were allowed to deduct these prices paid out to participants and even uh, other games, you know, for example, the typical poker that it was uh, on commissions, the taxable base was calculated. This new regime is, um, does not provide any guidance on, uh, on other uh, uncertain aspects such as the, the well-known bonus uh, but uh, it just include uh, a, a, a change in the calculation so there's there's no providing any guidance on, on uncertainties the new regime uh, established the net profit uh, which means a, a reduction a relevant reduction on certain uh, activities and then it also includes the reduction in the taxable rate uh, from the 20 to 25 percent to 20 percent. Uh, we have a column, uh, the saving, that it's the difference between the previous regime and the current regime. We have, as you could see, in pool horse uh, racing beds and in pool uh, in other pool beds, that the tax rate effectively increased, but 
probably because of the uh, change change in the taxable base, we will see also a reduction in the in the um, tax burden to be paid. And mm, the next column it includes the tax rate uh, for Ceuta and Melilla, this uh, specific regime that is trying to uh, enhance these uh, both uh, cities and uh, the, the activities in, in, in this area, uh, which means uh, a saving, a huge saving from the previous regime, because in, in it's 50% it's of the current regime, but if we are uh, considering the original regime applicable up to June, uh, 31st of June, uh, we see a, a relevant reduction. So these these changes are, as as Albert said, are trying to improve the, the our uh, gambling uh, market uh, in line with other jurisdictions such as Denmark, Germany, or or the UK. The the um, the tax rates and the taxable base uh, modifications are quite straightforward. So we will only focus on the on Ceuta and Melilla regime because uh, this regime is uh, where there are more uncertainties and more opportunities. The the financial uh, act foresees this new regime only for uh, the operators that are located in Ceuta and Melilla. This as said, uh, the idea is to enhance these areas in line with other other taxes, and it establishes a 50% tax rate saving. Uh, there are two conditions that the operators must be tax resident in these uh, areas and effectively establish, or the translation in Spain that it's realmente radicados in these autonomous cities. The first requirement that tax residency in Spain uh, and, and, and not only in Spain, in, in Ceuta and Melilla, uh, this is quite uh, easily to 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 figure out, no, and to understand the 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 the, um, the meaning. Uh, the corporate income tax establish, establishes that the company is incorporated for being incorporated in Spain. It's just resident in Spain, so for Ceuta and Melilla, it would be the same registered office in in, in Spain or place of effective management in Spain. No, in this case. Uh, we will need uh, that these tax residencies in uh, particularly in Ceuta and Melilla. We want to uh, to draw your attention to an anti abuse rule for tax havens, uh, uh, and and it's just because uh, for uh, it was introduced specifically for real estate, but it could also be applicable to some structures uh, and maybe even for gambling that it says that when it's the main assets directly or indirectly are goods or rights located or accessible in Spain the, uh, or the main activity is carried out in Spain, uh, the company will be uh, deemed to be a tax resident in Spain unless it's effectively managed and controlled in the tax haven and some business reasons different from the management of uh, values or, or, or assets uh, ex uh, exist. No? This uh, regime was introduced for real estate companies where this real estate is in Andalusia and the company, for example, is in Gibraltar or in another jurisdiction. But uh, depending on the on the structure implemented, it could also be applicable to other sectors such as the gambling one. So more or less, uh, the first requirement is more or less quite easy to to understand. The second one is more uncertain because uh, the what the new regime established is that uh, we need effectively be established in these autonomous regions, and there's no uh, um, any guidance on 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 this uh, on this wording. No? If we uh look or we analyze what the, the law says it says in the explanatory statement it refers to all the taxes within the spanish system so the idea is that they are introducing this reduction to be in line with a corporate income tax that uh it also allows uh a, a, in this case a p and all and a companies uh, that are based in ceuta melilla to have a 50 percent reduction on corporate income tax if we analyze the, the regime in the corporate income tax, it requires that the operators 
uh, uh, may apply this this regime if they are materially and effectively operating Ceuta and, Me and Melilla. So uh, the wording is not so far from effectively established and we may have some guidance in the tax rulings that they were issued for corporate income tax and even these rulings are about the allocation of profit because it's not uh, possible to have a box a, com a self company in Ceuta and Melilla and all the activities in Spain because the regime then does not apply for corporate income tax huh? and we may use these uh, rulings as a guidance but in fact we, what we will need is uh, to develop this uh, or, or to clarify this wording effectively established by means of, of the, the, the tax rulings issued by the General Directorate of Taxation and, and uh, until we have some guidance on, on from them it will be difficult to uh, clarify the, this wording. As said, we in these specific areas we have a, 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 another uh, um, another relevant reduction that is for corporate income tax and it must be also mentioned that the Ceuta and Melilla are out of the scope of the of the uh, BAD so uh, just to have in mind for uh, other uh, for structures or, or other uh, invoicing activities that we may have. In this slide we just one before entering into the examples, we just want to highlight that uh, there are some, or to provide some thoughts about the P status, uh, because we know that some operators are, are, are operating uh, by means of a foreign entity and they do not have a, a P in Spain. So uh, this is also, uh, this is always relevant for them uh, to clarify if they have a P or not. So. More than thoughts, I would say that a threat. Uh, what we are describing, because uh, the, the, uh, and, and ideas that m even that may be relevant in order to take a, a decision on if the regime is interesting or not for for them uh, in order to to balance if the, this potential uh, transfer to Ceuta and Melilla or or to whatever. No? The, as, as you know, uh, the OECD is implementing the, the BEPS the project and the BEPS project uh, entering to Debian uh, regarding the PE uh, and, and uh, because they consider that more PE should, be, uh, should exist in the current world and, and they, they introduce some measures such as the new definition for preparatory or auxiliary activities, the anti-fragmentation rules uh, when we have different activities that maybe are they're not enough to uh, consider that the company has a PE because they are really auxiliary but if we have different auxiliary activities maybe we have a PE because we have a, a cohesive business operation no? and this kind of uh, uh, ideas uh, should be considered when in, in, in our tax planning. No? Uh, in addition, the Spanish uh, tax authorities every year they provide a, a guidance on the, uh, the the sectors and the activities that that they are going to challenge, and uh, we we may face that in the last years they are uh, really focused on the uh, on control the permanent establishments and the transaction between uh, tax havens with tax havens. So. Uh, it's something to, to, to have in mind and in addition uh, as you know uh, there's a, a new European uh, the European Commission proposed a directive uh, in order to lay down rules relating to corporate income tax of significant digital presence they uh, they describe in this proposal uh, what they consider the significant digital presence and this significant digital, digital presence may uh, lead a digital P and although this is a proposal uh, for digital services they said that uh, we have to 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 go to the concept of electronically supplied services from the BAT directive which means that uh, the, the the gambling activities could uh, could uh, fall in this concept no 
So we should uh, really uh, have this in mind uh, and, and follow the, the, the legislative procedure uh, to, to clarify if uh, finally the sector will be affected or, or not for this regime, uh, for the digital P or even for the digital tax, you know, the digital services and the 3% that it's proposed on, on them. No? So uh, with all these uh, all these ideas, we think that uh, we will be facing in, in in the next years tax inspections. Uh, I'm not saying just for I'm not saying for gambling uh, in particular. I'm saying for a lot of sectors uh, in order to uh, to to establish or to consider that a P exists for uh, foreign companies. So these ideas should be considered when we are. Uh, thinking in in in, ta in tax planning. No? Going to the or entering to the into the examples, uh, we have uh, we have analyzed two, two situations, two basic and general situations. The first one is if we have a, a, if we are operating without a P without a P in, in Spain from a foreign company, and we have a revenue of a hundred from our activities in Spain, we are paying uh, uh, till uh, from from July the 1st, we are paying a 20% flat rate for gambling tax. And, uh, and then uh, we have an income of 80. Uh, as long as there's no uh, PE and there's no withholding tax on this activity, uh and and there's um and there are no uh and there are some expenses that are born in the in the company in whatever jurisdiction that in order to uh develop this uh, activity uh we have a taxable base of 40 so the corporate income tax Let's imagine a jurisdiction where, where the corporate in income tax is 5%, it's 2, whatever, eh? if it would be another jurisdiction, uh, whatever tax. Eh? And so the income after taxes, it would be 38. Uh, at the same time, we have the same structure with a, a tax haven, uh, a, a, a company based in a tax haven or a non-TTA jurisdiction. There's no PE. And therefore, the, the 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 cooperating. Let's assume that there's no corporate income tax, so income after taxes is forty. In the first uh, situation, we would have a, a DTA country. In the first column is the one that we have already described. No, the the regular situation. If we would be acting through a P in Spain. Uh, and assuming that all the expenses born are deductible from the Spanish taxable base, which is a thing that we should analyze carefully, we would have an income from in Spain for uh, 40 and a corporate income tax of 10 because it's 25% the current uh, uh, yeah, corporate income tax. The income after taxes would be 30 and we, there's, we assume that there's no branch tax uh, and therefore, an, the taxable base in the jurisdiction of resident will consider this income as exam. So, the, finally, uh, having a P, a regular P in Spain, it would be 30, the income after taxes. If we have the same in Ceuta and Melilla, uh, as long as we have a P, we understand that the benefit will not be applicable for gambling tax, but it, the corporate income tax. Uh, uh, benefit, the 50% could be applicable. So we have uh, a bit more uh, income after taxes. The next column is a subsidiary in Spain. And we are more or less with the same situation as a P in Spain, assuming that there's no withholding tax when the profit is distributed, uh, which is a thing that uh, it would depend on the jurisdiction and the DTAs uh, enforced with this country. And finally, if we have a subsidiary in Ceuta or Melilla, we would have a, a, the gambling tax, that it will be half of the current one, and the corporate income tax, that it could be also a half uh, of the current one. 
which means that uh, by having this subsidy in Spain, in Ceuta or Melilla, we would be improving the income of taxes. And also we would be uh, preventing the risk of uh, having uh, the tax authorities trying to challenge uh, the structure in order to consider that a company has a, the operator has a P in Spain. The next example is the same, the same one, but with uh, a tax haven or a non-DTA country, uh, we would have a uh, hundred as a revenue and the gambling tax for the net profit so the revenue it would be in fact the profit no uh, we would have the gambling uh, for 20 and well, the first example the first column is the example that we already discussed the second one the p in spain we would have we include the branch tax because uh the branch tax depending on the country it will be or not applicable, uh, but uh, with tax haven is always applicable. So we include a 19% uh, branch tax. So the the income after taxes uh, it's significantly reduced. Uh, if we have a P in Ceuta Melilla, uh, we would have also the the branch tax, but the corporate income tax would be half of the of the one that it's uh, the current one. And the the next column the subsidiary in Spain it would be uh, 100 and we would have 20 as a gambling tax because it's a comp regular company in, in whatever place in, in Spain we assume that the expenses we I have not mentioned but we are assuming that all the expenses are deductible but please know that when uh, the there's a, a um, a tax haven and the transactions with a tax haven, uh, it's assumed that uh, that are not deductible, the transactions, unless it's proved that it's really necessary and the service is, is, is effectively rendered. So the, the, the level of, uh, of uh, the, 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 there are, the proof must be higher than if the, the expense comes from a Spanish company, for example. And the corporate income tax would be 25% on the 40. It's 10, we will have the withholding of 19. So the situation is quite similar to the PE. And finally, uh, if we are, have a, a subsidy in Ceuta Melilla, it will be the gambling tax would be half of the, uh, of the current one. The corporate income tax, the same. And we have included the 19% withholding tax because there's no way to reduce it uh, by means of the DTA. No, the only in this scenario, uh, the, the the there's uh, there's no potential tax saving if we consider if we compare the first uh, column with the last column. The only thing is that we are tackling uh, the, the 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 risk uh, that the Spanish tax authorities consider that you have a P in Spain. So. As a conclusion, uh, we may say that before uh, considering this transfer, we think that it should be um, a bit uh, more clarification from the tax authorities about what they consider effectively uh, uh, um, established uh, uh, this, this specific wording in order to ensure that the gambling activities of the operator will be uh, entitled to apply this 10%, uh, but um, there's potential savings and uh, and there's another relevant saving that is the 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 reduction in the in the risk that the operator have a, has a PE in Spain. Thank you very much, Xavier. So uh, we hope that uh, you have found this session of interest. I mean, there's obviously uh, lots of things to, to, to think about. So please do not hesitate to, to, to contact us. Uh, firstly, obviously, if you want to get a copy 
of the presentation, we will be happy to, to, to send it to you, as well as to uh, clarify any issue that you may have, uh, particularly taking into account the, 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 the moment where we are with uh, the, 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 the movements surrounding uh, Gibraltar and, and Brexit, and therefore considering these uh, potential uh, tax regime as a workable alternative for your operations in Spain. In any case, uh, we do thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, we hope that you have found this of interest and we look forward to speaking with you uh, to discuss any of the topics that we have analyzed today. Again, thank you very much and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.